Hey, everybody, we want to welcome you to Spiritual Discoveries with Dan and Angela. Hi, everyone. And uh, we're, we're really excited about this subject that we're talking about today. It's actually part two. We talked about this last week, but we really want to bring it home. We really want to get to the core of what this means, tricks to making your faith and affirmations work. And I want to say right up front, a lot of Christians feel when they hear the word affirmations, they're running the other direction as fast as they can go. Oh, my God, that's spirituality. That's metaphysical. Oh, my God, get away. And it's not that. There's a scripture in the Bible. I think it's in Hebrews, but it says faith is the assured expectation of things hoped for, though not yet beheld. Faith is the assured expectation of things hoped for. So meaning there's this thing that hasn't come into fruition into your life. And it says that you'd want to believe anyway. Faith is the assured. I'm assured it's going to happen, though it hasn't yet beheld. But, so yeah, it, it hasn't yet appeared. It hasn't yet manifested. It hasn't yet come about. That's what that, that word means right there. So this is one of my favorite subjects because an affirmation is a vocal. I'm affirming that good's going to come in my life. I'm affirming I'm not going to stay in debt. I'm affirming I'm going to find a good wife. I'm affirming it's the assured expectation that I will find a good wife, that I will do this, that I won't be in debt my whole life, that I'll have a new car or whatever. So <clears throat> I learned this. I learned this in, in a spiritual church. And I, I got to say, I didn't believe it at first because I, I, I don't know if I should get right into the mind treatment, but the point is, there's there's magic in that. There's magic in the assured expectation of things hoped for, they're not beheld. And I didn't know that. I had a mind full of programming. There was a mind full of, you know, God's out there. God's angry. I'm no good. I'm junk. So until I got out from under that, which they call lifting the veil, as I could see a little clearer, I saw that the Bible said, well, actually, God said what I made was good and very good. Ooh, that's different. I like that. And you are a unique, not special, but unique expression of God trying to unfold itself beautifully that comes up out of the mud like the lotus flower. Now, I love that illustration because when I was a witness, I thought I was just a muddy person. I never did enough. I never served enough. I never reached out enough. You know, it was never enough, enough, enough. Right. And so... I thought I was that no good person, that dent in the pan. Every person after Adam was just junk and garbage and, and, not, and, good, and right? not good. And not good. And so when I went to this other church or spiritual center, they said, oh, my God, you're wonderful. You're beautiful. You're made in God's image and likeness. And what God made was good. And you're a facet of God. You're, you're a piece of God. There's a fractal of God that wants to shine through you like that's shown through Jesus. And you're going to be this unique emanation of God. And everybody is. Everybody's a unique fingerprint, right? They're all different. Not mine isn't better than yours. But it's a unique aspect of God that is going to allow divinity to shine through in a way like nobody else. But you get to shine your light like nobody else. And, and Grace, if you're going to, uh, if at any point you want to interject throughout this, we, we're not like uh, some people that want to have you at the end. We don't really want it that way. So please just butt right in, in wherever you want. Okay. So just want to make sure we, we say that. Yeah. So, so I had to come out from under this. So, so when I went to this church, there was all this beautiful music that we were somebody good. Mm -hmm. There's light after the dark mm -hmm. and we're going to move into this grand realization of who we are and who God is in us and all this beautiful stuff. And I just drank it in. Oh man, me too. I was like, yeah, Angela Dan got me to go to the same uh, place. It's, it's, it, they, they say they're not a church and and all this yeah it just to have a no bibles a, a very me a not mechanical a very structured way of of putting things together and and you realize yes your soul knows it's the truth yeah. and and so you get kind of like excited so i went to this place with dan and i'm like oh i was so nervous <laughs> and i went in there and i'm like wow i felt the love it was so tangible it was the presence of god was in that room and i'm like what are you doing in a place like this lord you know and uh, and but it, it was crystal clear to me and it was a big eye opener because I'm, I was so stuck in my ways, you know, the way that I had been taught. But this was a big one for me. And then I realized that all the people in that room and they, they said so 
that were from all different religions, all backgrounds. Most of them were recovering heard, Christians, recovering right. Catholic, recovering what is Recovering this? something. Recovering something yeah. spiritual. And, they were there. And they were there being told that they were um, wonderful uh, ideas in the mind of God and that they're good and very good, like the Bible says, right? So, you know. Let me uh, say one more thing. Uh, yeah, too. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just want to say what the, the main thing that, I, that we were looking for was they were happy. And they, they were on purpose. They were all excited about life. And I'm like, yeah. you know, so me and Angela are like, man, what's making these people tick? So we asked them and they said, well, one, one, the first thing they told us was you guys probably ought to go through an inner child journey. And that was a kind of a spiritual healing. You look back at what you used to believe and, you know, those spiritual implants that were put in us by religion keeping stuck and making yeah, you keeping feel bad you about stuck. everything like like life. one was called the money it's called wealth wounds and mm -hmm. one of the things that always shut me down when i thought about making money was the scripture that says be content with sustenance and yes. covering be content yeah. so when i'd start working my way into making some money that scripture that was in my subconscious mind that the witnesses said be, be content with enough was a wealth wound they call it and so in until that's unplanted until that's uprooted then that program runs you so what would happen is i'd start doing this financially and then i'd collapse and i'd say you yeah. know money's money's bad money's not and so i started learning and they said well let's uproot that where does crime happen mostly not that it don't happen with the rich but most of your crime is in very poor neighborhoods who can give to the poor those who have made, you know, made a good living, you know, who builds the libraries, who gives to the charities, who does that? If there wasn't people that have made money, those charities wouldn't exist. You know, what do they call them? The ones we go to? Uh, rescue missions. Rescue missions and stuff. They're all based on donations of people that have it to give and need write-offs and all these different things. So I we had to reprogram the money thing. So the point I was making was the inner child journey was going to help us with anger that we have toward people that has to go religious programming and judgment. God's angry and jealous and that had to go. And so it was a three day workshop on, on people saying, I love you anyway. And tell me, you know, what happened to you? And we'd have to write our problems on balloons and they'd give us 20 balloons and we'd blow them up and we'd write them and we'd put them all on there and we'd say, oh, this happened to me and that happened to me. We'd write it on the balloon. And then at the end, we, we let the balloons go and uh, they just kind of floated away. And so it was a workshop like that. And there was tremendous, tremendous healing. And there was also a lot of people that were doing very well, making a difference in the world. And so they were having classes on, you know, uh, just understanding yourself. And they were just making this huge impact in the world. And we're like, wow, because our churches weren't doing that. You know, we're, we're just very closed, but they're very open. And they were making a big difference. They were writing books. They were starting wonderful businesses. They were making people, let their lives flourish. There were governors, and senators, and, yeah, teachers, and principals, so 16,000 people. We couldn't argue with that. It's like, okay, so... You know, we're realizing something's wrong where we've come from. And all of a sudden we're like in this place where everybody seems to be very blessed and, and they're they're flourishing and they're happy. And I want that. And so that that kind of you know made us say, okay. So Dan really focused on that that treatment that yeah. they're helping so, you so get was, your mind right. Yeah. It's like a reprogramming the mind is really what it, it's all about because you have to remember who God is, right? And these different steps and open to God, and so it's got all these steps in it to get you in the right place before Almighty God, and then to receive and uh, ask and seek and knock and all the things the Bible says, but they put it into a nice little way of doing it that works. And it was working in their lives. And we saw that we could not argue with it. And then also to you guys, these scriptures we have that were taught in our churches, me, ex worldwide church, of, well, worldwide church of God, Herbert W. Armstrong is where I grew up in Dan, as everybody knows, Jehovah's witness, grace, Jehovah's witness. And so we are told these certain scriptures, like Dan said, be content with sustenance and covering. Do not wish for anything more. Just give everything else to God. You know, give it to the church. He's the root of all evil. Yeah, yeah, all of that stuff. So here's here's another take on it, okay? Here's scriptures that are different. And I'm going to point out why they're different. Some of them won't make sense, but I'll make, I'll make sense of it. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, meaning God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. 
of them that diligently seek him. So does God want to uh, reward us when we're seeking uh, to, I don't know, do something great in this world? Like we know that we're going to make a big difference if we started a, another uh, rescue mission, let's just say, and we have a dream to do that. And, and, but we have no money. And so we seek after God and we diligently seek him because we know we feel that he's put this on our hearts to do it. And so he said that he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But we must come to him and believe that that he is and that he will reward us for the asking. So he wants to. OK, so he wants to. Um, so it talks about that if you if you give that God says, approve me now herewith says the lord if i will not open you the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be not enough room to even receive it contain it and that's uh malachi 3 verse 10 so we we are doing our part and giving and then god says prove me now and see if i will not bless and pour out all of heaven to you uh, there, there's not even enough room to receive it. Does that sound like a God who wants to give us our blessings? So there's two now of God wants to reward us. He wants to give us, you know, what, what we're wanting. And here's another one. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you all the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, 4. I love that one. I, I've always loved that one. So if we delight ourselves in, in thanksgiving and, and we love God, we're so thankful for everything, we have a good attitude, he says, I will give you all the desires of your heart. Just put me first. Delight in me what I'm doing in your life. Delight in everything that's coming about. Just trust, re release, let go, open up. And I will give you all the desires of your heart. Okay, so there we go again. God is wanting to give us the desires of our Last heart. Place. Oh my gosh, you know, does it sound like a church we grew up in? God wants to give us the delights of our heart. He wants to reward us so that there's not room enough that we can't even receive it. It's so blessed. Okay, here we go. Uh, another one, Matthew 7, 11. If you then, and I believe this is mistranslated, so I'm going to change it right here and now. If you then, um, being imperfect, know how to give good gifts in, unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? So, and interesting, we want, we desire to give our children an inheritance when we die. I mean, maybe not everybody does, but we want to give good things to our children. We always think of nice things to do that, we, that would make their life better. We want to do it. How much more your heavenly father, who's not imperfect, right? Okay, so then we have Psalm 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. He withholds no good thing from those who walk with integrity. So if we're trying to walk right before our God and doing the best we can, and God knows that, it says that he will withhold no good thing. He wants to bless us. He wants to. Then we have Mark 11, and this is my last one. Therefore, I say to you that whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Wow. And so done unto you as you believe. Right, done unto you as you believe. Good or bad. So interesting. This is not the way that we were raised. What is it? I mean, it's completely not the way we you know, were raised. You know another one too I just thought of? What? It was the one where Jesus says, I've come so you could have life right. and, and have, have it, it more, more fully abundantly. or abundantly. I mean, have life more abundantly, not the afterlife, not later, but now I've come so you can have this life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. And the things I did, these and greater you'll do. So let's think about this. What what would cause that to come about? That that you have more, uh, you you live life more abundantly. So some people will argue and say, well, that's not about money. Well, you know, it, it can be anything. Um, whatever is abundant, abundant psychologically, abundant mentally, abundant emotionally, abundant in health, abundant in, in relationships, abundant in whatever. Money, of course, is part of our life, and it makes us feel like we could give to the world. I can create wonderful things. I can make great movies. I can create, you know, rescue missions. I can create places for Jehovah's Witnesses, ex worldwiders to come and get support and start their life over again. Oh, how wonderful! that would be oh i could create music i'm good in music i should do that and it, it, it takes money to do that guys and but that's a desire of our heart and we got to have money to do these things 
Otherwise, we're shut down people that don't amount to a hill of beans because we're too afraid to ask God for money. And we have guilt over it. I say that is a sin. <laughs> if there's anything that's a sin, you know, if there's anything that's mis misthought, miscreation, it's that thought that we should not have. When God clearly said in my list here, he wants us to have. So this is one thing we've got to get straight in our heads if we're going to believe the next part that we're going to talk about. If we're going to ask God things and we're going to affirm that I know what God said, I know what he said. I know that what I'm saying to God, that I can trust that he really does want to do this for me. He just said so in all of these verses. And I know that now. So I'm going to come to God believing and I'm going to affirm. I'm going to speak in faith that I know that God hears me. And if I know that he hears me, I know that I will have whatever I asked of him in prayer. That's what it says in the Bible. That's right. And so um, I know that I have because I came to God and, the, and I know that he hears me. And so um, and I know that it's his will because he just stated it right here. So 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 they're not new age principles. No, they're and not. that's what I don't like about Christianity. It's not new age to give all your money to the church. It's not new age to tithe and God needs your money, but it's new age when, when you affirm something for yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yet really truthfully, if you're asking a right and it's not for your own vain glory, because there is a way that you can ask and it says you will not get your answer because you have to check your intentions. There's a scripture that talks about that. If you're if you're not getting what you've asked for, you know, something's a little bit of a skew. You might not be asking a right because you have a wrong intention. You want it for your own glory or something. So, but if we know that it's God's will, because we know our heart's right, then we know we have whatever we asked of him in prayer. And so we should expect it. And that's believing. That's the prayer of faith. So we come to God believing, first of all. And now we're going to bring these affirmations saying, okay, Lord, you know, you've given this to me. So I've got my list on my refrigerator. When when things get weird and I start to feel insecure about things, I go and I read my list of things that I believe God has given me to believe and to dream and the things that I believe he's put on my heart to do and to become. And I have my list. You know, I am a... And I am going to, ha you know, this and that God is the source of my supply. I have everything that I think would help me to stay on track in my affirmations that I say daily so that I can see these things come about. And it, it helps because otherwise you're sinking, thinking, oh, everybody else has and I don't. And I'm never going to have that. You know, well, they're born with a silver spoon in their mouth. And oh, well, they got educated and I didn't. And we we're just waiting for the world to end. And so I didn't get anywhere. So God can't do that for me. You know, it's like, where's the faith in that? God can't bless that attitude because it says I don't believe. And that God says that he's the God of the impossible. So with God, all things are possible. Yeah. I don't care how old you are. Look, Moses was 80 years old when God said, okay, Moses, that promise I gave you 40 years ago that you're going to lead my people out of slavery, out of Egypt, is now when you're 80. And that's when that's now. Let's get going. And so at 80 years old, he starts. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. But it's never too late. No. And God no. says this. God says it's a promise. But he says, if you turn to me, uh, just like the scriptures say, if you turn to God, if you want to do righteousness, do goodness, he says, I will give you back what the locusts have eaten. Amen. That's a big promise. That's a big what promise. the locusts have eaten means, I don't know if you, you're familiar with that, Grace, probably are, but the the locusts come in and they'll devour a field. They, when a big, huge locust thing come in, you heard it in the Bible, the one of the plagues, right? Yes. They come in and they'll just level a cornfield. They'll just Quick. level things out. Quick. Well, God says, and, and that's sometimes our life in, in Jehovah's Witnesses. A lot of witnesses say, I lost my life. I'm, I was in it 40 years and I don't have nothing and on and on, right? But the Bible says, I will give you back what the locusts have eaten. And me and Angela both experienced that. Oh, yeah. We've lost everything. And we've experienced that. And, but like we were talking about early on, unless you think you're somewhat good, unless you reconnect, like the inner child journey was reconnecting with that person before it was wounded by religion, right. before it was wounded by being raped by this person, before it was this, the, the whole thing of the this class and, and, and why they suggested it to me and Angela was because we were wounded. Right. We came out of religion. Angela was abandoned by her husband. I was abandoned by my wife after 17 years. Angela was almost 25 years and we were both abandoned. So, so we were hurting units. So, so when we walked into this place, 
people would say, you guys ought to, you know, check out the inner child journey, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, maybe... All different religions were present in this room. Did, oh, yeah. 300 was, people were in the room. And he was not the same one. I went to no. one later, a few years later. But everybody in there was from a different religion. There was Catholics. There was... Uh, there was every There was everything. And they were all severely wounded. And like Dan shared before, in his, he saw people were way more wounded 300 than 300 people was. wailing. You know, when they yes. said, what did God look like to you when you were a child? And I said, man, he was angry and he's mad and he's ready to kill everybody who don't know his name. And I did this little module where I set up my family. We had to do a statue and or what do they call it? Archi uh, architect. With we, using humans. Yeah. So I said, you go over there and you play Jehovah. So one guy's like this. And then I said, you play the guy in the platform that's reading the Bible. So they had a guy like this and you're reading the watchtower. And then we were sitting in the back row, right? We were the dirty Clarks, the mentally ill mother and all this and and so anyway i watched that scenery and i started crying and there's a facilitator there and she goes why are you crying and i said why is god mad at all of us who's this why is jehovah mad i mean he created the whole damn thing he created adam and eve it's his master plan that fell you know and i thought and who are these idiots between me and jehovah who are these idiots who's what's this watch this is what went on in my head as I saw this, you know, uh, structure, this architectural structure. Yeah. I, I was like, holy shit. That was the end of religion for me right there. Mm -hmm. I was like, never, ever, will ever, ever, ever a man be between me and God and tell me I'm junk. So this thing did exactly what it was supposed to do. It was like, I love me now. I love me now. Um, I don't want, I should probably this, shouldn't go in the birth canal, should I? No, let's not go there. But, but let's talk about uh, the, what we did learn in that, in that uh, particular yeah. kind of so, a church. So that was, so yeah. So that was stage one. That was stage one, getting some inner healing, realizing who you are, you're good and very good. And you kind of went back and you reestablished that. It was like reestablishing a plug that was unplugged. See, religion went, you're no good and you're this and you're that. And pastor's going to lead you like the sheep and crowd you around with a with a staff and move you this way and that way. Come over here, over here. Get the dog to bark at you and go that way. That was kind of religion. And so this thing was going to plug you in to really, no, no, that's not what it was. God, what he made was good and very good. And you are very good. And you're going to unfold in some beautiful way and unfold and shine your light like nobody's ever. And I was like, yes. yes. And now that I feel worthy, now that I feel like, yes, yes. It's like, what can I create? So the next thing that people... You're free because you believe that. You're starting to really believe that. You're starting to, It yeah. takes a little while, guys. Reprogram. And that's why we're having to talk about this first before we discuss the actual thing things that, that began to be the mechanics to make this thing work because there are spiritual laws in place. This is what we didn't get taught in our churches. So Dan's going to tell you in a minute some of the things that I, I just told you about my list. And we, me and Dan, pace and speak out loud as often as we can when we're feeling really low, especially of the things that we are affirming that we believe about God, about our what he's wanting to do in our lives, what we believe he wants to do in our lives, and what we're believing him for. And we speak it out and we pace and say it and say it until it becomes a, that we're literally until the word becomes flesh <laughs> right until our minds have been changed over to the new way of seeing it and it just takes that work it does yes and so so the next uh thing we did was i i asked the people you know i was like man why are you guys so happy and they say oh you know we've we've gotten rid of all all the programming and i said yeah how'd you do that i got stuff in my head i can't get out and they said well there's these classes we take. And, and I said, yeah, what are they? He said, they're called spiritual mind treatments. I was like, ooh, that sounds scary. You know, yeah, spiritual sounds, mind treatments, you know, practitioners crazy. like, are you guys witches or, you know, yeah, coming out of religion, you're like, what is that? You know, and they're like, well, actually your mind is you, you, a lot of what's running you is in your subconscious mind because you have taken scriptures that haven't caused you to blossom they've actually caused you to shut down you know you, you know jehovah's angry you know be afraid of jehovah the fear you know so you you kind of have this program running your mind yeah and they're like we've got to get to that subconscious programming and so they call these things mind treatments we're going to treat a sick mind and how we're going to treat a sick mind is 
it's it's a trick. We're going to trick ourselves. See, the faith is a sure expectation of things hoped for is a trick. What do you mean I'm going to hope uh, be assured of something hoped for though it's not here? That sounds crazy. That's like mind over matter. Yes, it is mind over matter. See, here's the thing. When we if somebody was to tell you about Jehovah's Witnesses and tell you about their faith, you could care less. But if they said to you, you know God's name is Jehovah, that's why you, your prayers aren't answered. You say, tell me more. What do you mean my prayers aren't answered? Well, you don't know God's name. How do you, right? Yeah. So that belief now has yeah. become, it, it was just something stupid. I've heard, what are you talking about Jehovah? Who's Jehovah? What's this Jehovah in the Bible? Who cares? It's nothing. But once you say, you know, tell me more. Well, here it is, and they took it out. Satan doesn't want you to know God. And so all of a sudden, the, the belief is like this. It's like a balloon. It's like now it's implanted in your mind. <clears throat> That's why I always ask witnesses, what did you do with all the belief systems? What did you do with the Trinity? What did you do with Jehovah? What'd you, did you work that stuff out? Or do you still have that running program in the back of your mind? You still have it in your programming that we should have nothing but sustenance and covering. Yes. Anything else beyond that is not of God. And see, this is our programming, right? But when God said that, no, we just read all of these things that were contrary to that. But, but if those God, other scriptures are there, but, you're done for. Right. But if you, but look, I said to myself, okay, what about this sustenance and covering? Let's just take that one apart. Look, we should be thankful and grateful for simple sustenance and covering. When King David was having to run away from King Saul, who was trying to kill him all the time, and he was having to run with his people and his men and his women and, and hide in caves and go from one place to another, he was content. Thank I, I've got God with me. I am not alone. He is providing for me. He's making sure I have everything that I need wherever I go, including safety when I sleep at night. And he was content with that. But guess what? He was also wishing for more. And God gave it to him. In the end, you know what happened to him. He was a highly blessed, became the king of Israel, and he was highly blessed uh, suddenly. And so God did give him all the de desires of his heart, and God did tell him that he was going to be king of Israel one day. And he, But he had to go through a lot where he was just thankful for sustenance and covering. But you know what? That's not God's end for us. No. He wants us to be blessed and highly blessed and overflowing until we cannot even contain it. And that's his, so we have to consider that it's more than what we were told. They, they've taken it out of context and just said, you should just be happy with, what, with this little bit that God's giving you. No, that is not the whole truth. We should be when things are tough. When things are tough, we're grateful for what we do have and always have gratefulness no matter what. But we're always, because we're, we have God's mind and because we're like God, because he made us in his image, we're creative beings and we have ideas that came from God because we're aspects of God to be here to create in a certain aspect in a certain way that only we could shine it like and we can only, only I could speak it in the way that I do. And it's meant because I'm the aspect of God that will help that person and this person for that person. We're all here for a point and so look we're, we're more than just sustenance and covering god has more for us than just that but we have to get that in our head and believe it before we can move on and believe that these affirmations we're about ready to tell you would even work in the first place because we're so stuck and we're going to tell you they did work yes. in a masterful way, oh, big oh, way big way way that more than we could ever expect it yes. and i want to say this right here all the good and i mean this with all my heart and i'll and i'll say it just like it is all the good that you could ever want or imagine is already here right now waiting for Amen. you, Absolutely. waiting for you. And that is a true statement. And I'm going to prove it in a minute. Yes. So, so how do we get this stuff out? How do we start affirming something different? Well, this church had what they call a five-step treatment, which is like a prescription, like a spiritual prescription. And by the way, we did talk about this on the last video, but yes. for the sake of keeping this as a whole, we need to discuss it again. Yes. So there was a five-step treatment. Step one was recognition. And, and it, step two was realization. Step three was the affirmation, the, 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 the assured expectation. And then step four was thanksgiving believing that it was already done. And then step five was releasing it to God. And so that was, they called a five-step mind treatment. So 
I went to these classes, you know, and I said, okay, what do we do? And the lady says, okay, we're all going to say it together. Okay. We, so they would, it would be like a prayer. So they, they would say, you know, we realize right now. Maybe now this is experience it a little bit, Dan. Help us say, as you to explain yeah, it, yeah. let's experience it a little bit. Yeah. Try to do it with us. Right? So, so it'd be like, you know, you'd say, you know, Lord, I know that you're always here. You're always present. You cannot not be present. You are totally present. We have the sunshine. We have the water. We have the food. We have everywhere. Everywhere is where you are. Everywhere I look is where you are. That's that recognition. And I know and here's the realization. Now you bring it a little closer into you. Now you say, if you are Lord, then I am. I'm part of you. You birthed me. You knitted me together in the womb. Yeah, you know, you're you're separate. above me, you're below me, you're you're in and through me, you're as me, you're you, you know, so you would do this. And and what this would do would get you in alignment that you weren't separate from God. You can't be separate. God is beating my heart. I'm not beating my heart. The thoughts that I think, I can't put them together. They're really not in my mind. They're in an etheric field. What I'm talking about now is coming from a, an etheric field. And so, so I cannot be separate from God. So this is what the first two steps of the treatment were. And then we get that, to soak it in, right? Yeah. The next so, so yeah, the, so, so you sit there for a minute. After you did the, the realization, you, you'd sit there and contemplate, yeah, I, I'm not separate from God. He loves me. Yeah, God birthed He's me blessed. together in the womb. God is closer than my breath. Where I stand is holy ground because where I stand, God is. He He made me in his image and likeness. I'm and the apple of God's eye. Yes, he and every hair in my what he head. made was good, which is me and very good. And what he made was you was very good. And so you'd get this connectivity and it would feel good. And you say, oh, yeah. So see, we're already treating that part of us that said in most churches, you're wretched and only one died for you. And God's not happy with and you. God's not happy. And you're a you're dead not man after Adam and all that. It, it's, a, nothing. it's a total restructuring. So you'd so you have to say it with the tone and then you'd have to feel it that was the, the realization you, you you'd you'd start inculcating or embodying it you'd say yes that is the truth and you'd say that that is the, truth. the truth i will accept no other truth i know i'm one with the divine and this is divine union and all this stuff <clears throat> is truth too yes and I, and i know i can't be separate and i know i'm not junk and i know and so this was a beautiful thing i tell you my mind was like yeah get this crap out of here all this junk i don't want that anymore so i was treating through the spoken word through my feeling tone i was treating this this mind that had been corrupted by religion and <laughs> corrupted by men who want me in boxes and churches and tithing the churches and working in the church. No, I'm I'm something else. I don't. I'm I'm not your program. I'm not a religious program. I'm made in the image and likeness of God, and that's huge. And God and, said, "I am good and very good." Yes. Yeah, so so you get into this, okay? Then you realize you're connected. So here, that was two. So recognition, God was all there is, right? God, uh -huh. that, knowing that you're connected with God. And pondering that. That's step two, And right? so we would sit with that. It was weird, but you'd get some kind of spiritual connection sitting with that. And it would feel good. It was like basking and oh, bathing yeah. in, oh, in that part. truth. It's bathing in the truth of who you are. And the reason that it felt so God. good is because even though your mind tells you, no, you're not that. And you realize your sin nature and all this stuff. The soul knows the truth. You can't, you who you are in a soul level is God stuff. We are God stuff. And so that fed, that thought, that feeling fed my soul. And my soul was overjoyed in knowing this truth that I wasn't just this. Yeah, I'm light and dark, but I'm working on the dark. You know what I mean? But I'm not bad and I'm not junk. And I don't need to forever be forgiven. I don't. I just need to turn around. Jesus said I didn't come to judge. So anyway, so that was the second part. So that felt good, didn't it, yeah, Angela? It, did. it felt really it good. It felt really yeah. good. So then you'd say, it was like the affirmation. What is it you want to affirm for you? For me, it was writing a book. I want to write a book. I want a good wife one day. I want a, I want a wife. I, I want a sweet wife. I, I want some prosperity. I, I've lost a lot in this witnesses. I, I'm affirming prosperity for myself. I'm affirming that... I will find that one wife. That one wife is already there in the mind of God. It's already there waiting for me. And, and I'm already, you know, there for waiting for Angela. 
And so my good was already there. Angela was already there. Prosperity was already there. All of the things that I could ever need or want was already there. So, so I would affirm it. I'm going to be an author. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to make a movie. I'm going to, I'm going to have some abundance in my life. I actually said one I day. I want to be able to travel, Lord. Yeah. And I actually said one day when I was making like 50,000 a year, they, they passed the thing around and they said, what do, what do you want to make per year? And I put 100,000 on there. Right. Mm. And, and they were going to put it in this big, like prayer chest, this affirmative thing where the whole church prayed over. Right. So I put in there, I put a hundred thousand and I said, Oh my God, you know, I'm going to put 200,000. Right yeah. And I went like this. I went, Oh my God, you know, I put 200,000 in the box. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. It's all going to be how, prayed how over. crazy. This is, this is nutty. I'm a nutcase, but hell who cares? I'm, I'm just playing with this right, stuff. Right. That's right. <laughs> Ended up making over 300. Hundred thousand, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just yeah. a few years later, right? Yeah. And they said what we're going to do is put this box away, and we're going to come back later and look after a year or two years, see and we're going to see what happens. Yeah. See if see if the stuff <laughs> it happened all right. And I found my wife, and and so so anyway, I'm affirming. I, I I found my wife. I found this beautiful partner. We're sharing our life together, you know, and and. The money that business. we need. We, we, yeah, we, we wrote a book after we got married. A year later, we wrote a book. Yes. So that and, came about. And so everything came about. Everything because we stopped thinking about what we didn't want. We stopped thinking about why we were bad and all the stuff religion has us with this mirror in our face, always saying, you know, wanting us to look at why we're not as good as we're supposed to be, why we're duds, why we're throwaways, why we're, you know, just junk. You know, like I used to go in these churches and they'd say, you know, I'm wretched. And then another guy would pass the microphone. Well, I'm more wretched. I, I said, God damn, I'm lying. You know, and I know church. God hates me. And I said, my son said, Jesus, Jesus Christ. And, it, and that's like saying F you. And I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry. And then they passed. <laughs> and I, and I said, why I'm are you guys, on I said, words. why are you guys doing this? Why are you telling each other you're wretched? Now, this was after my mile high experience in this church. I said, this is crazy. This, this is, is just a Christian church now that we're talking about. Yeah. And, yeah, so, yeah. So, but I had that, that, that training and we were visiting and I said, this is absolutely nuts for you guys to, to reaffirm your weakness and your wretchedness. And I, I don't get it. So, so anyway, we got into doing these, these affirmations. And so one day I, I prayed though, how far wait, do you want me to go well, with this? Go to the very end of the, oh yeah. Training. So, so, the, so, so step one, recognition, right? Oh, God, God is all the right. And then two is the realization that you can't be separate from and God. You feel it. And then you feel it. Experience and then step three is I'm going to have the courage. Now, it takes courage to do this. It goes against everything you've been ever told because you're junk. You're no good. Don't say anything good about yourself. And don't dare ask God for any more than just the, the, the Jesus re died for you. And that's all you're going to get. It's it's like, no, I'm not that anymore. And so the affirmations was the third thing. That was number three part of the treatment. So asking God. You're asking now. Um, or or affirming, affirming, affirming but, that it's but done. But you're also pointing it out there. So you are asking, but then you're affirming. Yes. Okay? And so you're going, you know, you're just doing these, I want this, or I believe for this, or this is going to come into my life, this wife, this prosperity, whatever, um, wholeness, peace of mind, um, whatever it is you're asking for, like Angela said, abundance whatever shows up in many ways. As simple as that. I just believe that I'm a good mother and that I have many friends. That That's could right. be affirmations because That's right. you don't have that in your life. So you believe God for that, that God's going to turn me around so that I have good relationships and people that love me in my life. And I'm the best mother and my children, you know, rise up and call me blessed. They love me very much and, and I'm, I'm affirming whatever it is you want to affirm. And look, you know, if, if, if God can, if it's in the plan and according to God's will, then it will come about in due time. Like Moses, forty years later, right? Yeah. Anyway, you never know. So, so yes. Yeah, so that's step three was the affirmation, or you know, this year faith, shared expectation of things hoped for, and then four was giving thanks as if it was already done. You remember Angela read the scripture, believe that it's already done. There's a saying in sales. It says you can believe you can. And you can believe you can, and they're both right, because there's a law with belief. If I believe I can't, then you won't. If I believe I can, there's a possibility. And so there's laws working both ways. That's why they say both ways work. And so you give thanks that it's already done. So you said, I give thanks that this has been heard, that it's in the mind of God, that it's taken off an angel's wings, it's being done. The whole world is working on my half to bring this about. And so you're affirming that it's already done. And I got to tell you, 
when we did these, all heaven and earth was moving. This is powerful. The whole heaven and earth was moving on my behalf yeah. and Angela's behalf. Everything was changing. We couldn't see it at the time. We couldn't see what was happening. I mean, I had a boss fire me and all sorts of things. But but anyway, so, so the third part is after you do that affirmation, you say, I know that it's done. I know that it's done in the mind of God. I know that my good has been heard. It's being acted upon. It's it's coming more toward me, whatever you want to say. Yeah. So it was that was that was the third. So all these are wonderful feelings. The, the thought that your so God good. is everywhere and he hasn't abandoned me and he loves me and he feeds me every day. And you know, I'm I'm one with God. And he's got plans for me. I'm not junk and I'm just gonna affirm Lord, I'm gonna write a book. I I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. What we don't realize is the spirit in us is God wanting to write the book. It, it's it is you, you know what From I mean? God. And so ideas are from God. Yeah. So you affirm it's already done. You say it's done. I know it's done, Lord. I know you want to. Jesus said, I want to. You know, remember when they said, Will you help me? And Jesus says, I want to. I want to help you, right? And so God wants to. We're his children. We're children of the most high. Yeah, if you if you just want to be rich because you want to be rich and famous, so you you're better than everybody else and your heart's wrong, guess what? It's just not gonna happen. It's yeah. gotta have a right heart to it. Yeah. And so <clears throat> and so anyway, and then there's the releasing it. There, there's a saying in, in 12 step. It says, after you've done everything, actually this in the Bible, it mm -hmm. says, after you've done everything, stand, 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 just stand. I've done everything I can. I've petitioned God. I've, I've spoken the word. I've affirmed it. It says now stand. So in the, in the mind treatment, it says, let go and let God, it says, release it into the mind of God in the quantum field, whatever it is. And let it do its thing. Now let go of it. Don't hold on to it. Now we'll do that at first. We'll hang on to it. We'll we'll wrestle with it. We'll say, oh, what we just did was a waste of time. You know, it's not going to happen. This is me being crazy. This church is nuts, by the way. I should just be happy with sentence assistance and covering. I shouldn't be thinking. Yeah, all those it's programs come back. Asking. And, yeah, it all comes flooding back, right? And you go, no. You and know. here's the surprise. The surprise is this. When it happens. Okay. Yes, because the Bible says this. <laughs> Just have the faith of a mustard seed. <laughs> a mustard seed, you almost can't see with the naked eye. Yeah. So so the Bible says. But, but talking about the seed, you know, you plant that in the ground, right? And you don't keep digging it up every day to see if it's okay. growing under that dirt. You you have to plant it, put the dirt on it. You have it. to trust that it's being, it's growing under there. You don't, you can't dig it up or it will not grow. You have to let it be. So the last step to this whole thing is. Let it go and let it be. Let go. It's in the, it's in the mind of God. It's in the etheric field. It's been spoken. You, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, I hate to say this. I know this was <laughs> in our religion is God only spoke it. But if, if God is speaking through me, then it says, so my word that goes forth from my mouth will prove to be, and it will certainly do that in which I've delighted. And it will not return to me void. And so if we're speaking it from the heart, from the mind of God, and we're speaking, what's wrong with me affirming a wife? What's wrong with me affirming a little prosperity? What's wrong with me coming out from working in a Believe job that I hate? That will help Believing people. that I'm going to write a good book. Believing I might be, make a movie one day. A lot of people make movies. So, so it's interesting, but what happens is, as you do these mind treatments, you actually start believing I mean, there's a lot of forces against you, right? Oh, there's a lot. Yeah. And, and there's nothing seen, right? There's nothing happening in the linear, meaning there's nothing you can see. Well, nothing happened. In fact, I just lost my job. Yeah, you know, there's like nothing happening. You're going, what the hell's going on? Is this kind of, some kind of joke, God? I mean, I just lost my... Well, in order for one world to emerge, you know, it's almost like one world has to die. In order to, 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 to get out of Watchtower and all the programs, you, you almost have to leave and shut the door. And, and then you, you, you start moving around over here and moving into other realities. So until you can dismantle some of these limiting beliefs that religiosity is put in our head and all this negativity and, and faithlessness and hopelessness and despair and just getting by and, 
You, you know what I mean? Yeah, let me just uh, say this too. So when I met Dan, he was in a situation where he had worked for this guy that was just treating him like a, uh, like an animal. And it was, he was having to breathe heavy, horrible fumes uh, with people that were just gross to work around uh, the way that they thought and the way that they were and acted. And, and Dan's just like, you know what? I'm going to die in here. I'm going to literally die in this like a, a sweat box, but it's a fumigated sweat box. Uh, and, and he's like, I'm going to die. Is that all I'm good for? I'm just good for nothing. So he started really appealing to like crying out to God and, and Lord, I'm the lonely. I need a, I need a good woman in my life. And he was pouring his heart out to, and, and giving us to God and having deep heart cries about it. And, and boom, like with, with it just felt like within weeks, yeah. he was, uh, a, a, a certain arrangement happened where he saw that this is not good. And, and why is it? Why is this? And why is that? And it, ke it kept on saying, Lord, I can't do this anymore. Please, please. And all of a sudden, boom, his his boss fires him. And, but he said, no, Dan, you quit. He, he said, you quit. So he didn't have to pay unemployment. Right. And so the next thing you know, Dan's like floundering, but little and, and did, did he know that God had big, huge change, ma massive plans, plans, including meeting me and including starting his own business. That then, then still some more, you know, scariness went on. Yeah, and let me tell them about that a little bit. For, yeah, <clears throat> it was just a matter of weeks. I was at my apartment, and and literally, I had an eviction notice on my door, and I, I was. And I knew Dan at this time. Yeah, and I was looking up to God, going, "God, it's just some kind of a joke." I, I thought this stuff worked, you know. This affirming. This He's affirming and this mind piece, treatment. Yeah, uh -huh. Well, I said to myself, I said, you know, I don't have nothing else. I'm going to, I'm going to burn a hole in that carpet. I am going to wear a hole. I mean, this sounds crazy guys. I know it sounds absolutely he had nothing nuts. else. I had nothing else. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to believe anyway, despite everything's falling apart around me. A little did I know the universe was already orchestrating, you know, orchestrating everything. everything, how I was going to meet Angela. It's amazing story oh, guys. So I, I've written about it in several things. I, I wrote it in a thing called, uh, what's that little DVD I did? Oh, uh, gr uh, grace, grace by, by miracles, miracles, prospering in times yes, of uncertainty. uncertainty. Grace can move like a feather, what would otherwise be impossible for the mind. Yes. And I wrote about this whole story, but basically I said, I'm going to pace. I'm going to believe anyway. I don't care. Let it all fall. Let everything fall. Let me go on the street. Let me do whatever. I'm going to believe this truth. And I'm going to really go for it. And so Dan would, would do this. And he, he said, I felt so light, like a feather. Like I could walk through walls. It was just like I was in another. Yeah, wall. I started doing the treatments. I started yeah. pacing. Yes, and saying these affirmative things. I believe that God loves me and that he's for me and not against me and all these kind of things. And so, and so boom, you know, he, he's met me. Hold on a minute. Let's oh, wait, go, go back ahead, a little go bit. Ahead, go ahead. Because I'm, I'm pacing, right? Yeah. Now, I want to be honest here. The the race consciousness, the programming that was in me was there too. Yes, that's just so, what I was going to say. So after this, before I met you though. Oh no, well, maybe it was. No. Yeah, I met you. But anyway, I want to go back just a little bit. Okay. But I, I'm doing this pacing. And I'm, I literally, I, I think I said this maybe in the last video, the curtains caught on fire behind me. Yeah, you said that last And video. And I threw them out on the deck. I don't know how that happened. I really don't. It just, they, they were just inflamed. Yeah, it's not, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Sure. But anyway... I, I said, I'm going to burn a hole in the carpet. Yeah. And, and I did. And like Angela said, I even lost myself. I wasn't even like in the room. I, I felt like I was floating, going through walls. I was just going back and forth with my eyes closed. And anyway, go ahead. But, so but, so but, anyway, I want to stay out on the trail. Yeah, that's what I was going to talk yeah, about. Yeah. I would go out there and I would be crying. Yeah. I would say, you're a dumbass. Get right. your ass back to this work. This is the Dad. devil talking. This was this is the counselors of Joe. Yes. Who do you think you are? You're Get back to stupid. Work. You're from Detroit. You've got a third grade education. You remember you were waiting for the world to end. You graduated with a D minus, you dumbass. Get back to work. And and all Who of this was think you are? Yeah, go back and beg for your job and tell them you're so sorry and plead and beg with them. And 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 I'd be crying, and I said no. And I'd go back in the apartment. I'd do and, my and pacing. And I got to do my part there too. I got to yes. talk to him on the phone. I called Angela. 
and I just said, no, 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 Dan, I had all these things to say positive in the positive yes. direction. Like, no, do you keep on believing God is going to, he's going to, he's hearing you and you just do everything you know what to do and you leave the rest to God, let go, trust God, surrender. And he just kept doing that. It was this back and forth, back and forth. Uh, my, the mind would, you know, go back at it again and then no, and he'd have to walk and pace again. No, I affirm that this is the truth. And, and but the mind was warring. Yeah, but here's what happened. Eventually, I started, now hear me, eventually I started to love the treatment. Yes. Eventually I said, I love believing. Yes. I don't care if it shows up or not. I'm going to die dreaming. <laughs> you know, I'm going to die dreaming. I'm going to meet that wife. Well, you know, I gave up. I, I went in the bedroom and I said, Lord, I surrender all this to you, which is the part of the treatment, which was the letting go. I spoke it with everything I had. And I said, I, I'm just going to leave it to you. You know where that woman is. You know where that. Yeah, I was just friends with him at this point, you know, in this in this part that we're talking about right here. But any, but he was just affirming everything still. You know? Yeah, but this guy that came in, this mentor that I came in, said you ought to go over to John Elway, and that's where Angela was. He was the guy who said you ought to be making a thousand a day, and you're only making two hundred, and you're losing eight hundred. Like this angel that Dan actually was one of the things that was affirming on his pacing was that he could have a mentor who knew about money and finances and knew how to help Dan to do something in life. You know, start his own business. I don't know, learn how to function in this world. Whereas a Jehovah's witness you don't know how to function when you come out you're lost so he asked for a mentor and this crazy guy comes into our life he's still living on my couch yeah next thing you know for a little while he tells me go over to john so elway go over to john elway and make yourself ten thousand a month me. so and, i meet him <laughs> because of this crazy angel mentor it was an oddball i'm telling you what when you have angels come in your life they're oddballs okay yeah because they have to be in disguise they're not allowed for you to know that they're angels or they i, I think they're not going to get as good a reward in the end so they have to fake you out that they're the real genuine thing so they're very odd and that they do things you don't expect that angels would ever do so so you don't you don't figure it out <laughs> i told this guy flat out i know who i know who you are even though <laughs> you're yeah i think you're a con and you're this and you're that i know you're an angel though i do i do know this you know <laughs> anyway it's crazy so yeah so anyway that the the other thing the guy says is you ought to be making a thousand a day and you're losing 800 a day that's why you can't see your kids that's why you're in you're in Colorado and your kids are in Idaho because you don't make a damn enough money you ought to be making more money you, you know and he went on and on he's screaming at me yeah, right yeah. but what i want to say was that was an angel and right. that was called in through right. affirmative prayer right. that was called in. I need a mentor. I need a mentor that will help me. I'm going to, I'm going to have this mentor. I walk in a church guy with a big flower on his shirt says he's been a multimillionaire over and over. And I said, Hey man, would you teach me? He goes, yeah, I need a little place to land for, for a few months before my big deal comes in. He's the guy who was responsible for me meeting Angela. He was the guy responsible I, I shouldn't say all responsible. Angela and him were responsible for us making a thousand to three thousand dollars a day for the next five years. Exactly what the guy said was true. Right. I couldn't believe it. I made a thousand to three thousand dollars a day, making over three hundred thousand a year. After what was it? A couple of years, a year and a half. I don't know. But we started making big money, and it ain't all about money, guys. I, I don't want to make it all about money. Yes, right. But money was okay. It was. I didn't even expect that. We got to take our girls on trips oh, to to San Francisco. Never spent a dime. Was, I had no money to spend them. I couldn't even go see them. We I took was them so to nice places on the ocean, and we even went to uh, Oregon on the top and stayed in a condo for a week and enjoyed train that. trips. And it went on, it, all kinds of Mackinac trips. Island boats, jet boats. And all because we had some money, and these girls had the time of their lives. They have wonderful memories with their dad because we had some money. It's a glorious, wonderful thing. We could do good things with that money. So here's what we I want to say. With that money. Yes. And there, and there was a time when I was down in Denver and I was looking up the buildings and I was screaming. I, I, I was, Before me. I was down on, I think it was Pearl Street or something. And I'm looking up at these Wells Fargo buildings and these bank buildings. And I was like, you stinking Harvard executives. And you got all the money wrapped up in these buildings. It's all in paper. In and, and I was like, bank. Lord, how could you do this, okay. God? How could you give these bankers all of our money. We, we don't even have access to it. They're in those buildings, in those machines, in that paper. <laughs> and God's like, no, I have a, I have a little stash for you. I have a big stash have for you. Inheritance. That's why I'm saying everything that I could ask for, believe was already there. That money that we made was already in those banks in Evergreen and they were just waiting for me to show up. There's no lack or limitation. There was no lack or limitation. I needed to show up. 
So I chose this. I chose, I was going to, you know, faith is the assured expectation of things hoped for. I was going to believe that instead of believe the other, that it wasn't so. And my world changed. I found the wife of my dreams. I found prosperity. We started our own business. Okay, let me just uh, hop to another example real quick. And, then and we'll I started painting. It. Oh, yes. And, and other things came about, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go, lead so on. I'm going to go to uh, another situation. So D Dan and I needed to move to Idaho. We we're in Colorado because this girl's really needed him in these latter days of their teenage years, really struggling during those years. So we came here and it was, it was a bit of a struggle and it was a stretch, but God was faithful. Everybody and, told us to stay home. It's a good old boy's oh, town. Yeah, You'll never yeah. make it here. Well, and it, and it was tough getting started here in Idaho. I got to be honest with you, but God was faithful and he really did take good care of us and we managed to, to get started here and um so we we're living in this rental home for a couple of years and it was time for that rental uh to be up well we had intended to go back to colorado once we got the girls graduated and everything was good but everything wasn't right to move back there we thought i don't think i ever want to move back to colorado at this point so we're like okay well we're gonna have to find a house to buy so we, I was like, man, Lord, you know what? And we started like imagining what that home was going to be like that we wanted to buy. And, uh, and the, and it's getting closer and closer to the time the lease was going to come up and we're, we're looking, but we're, we're writing offers that were really not exactly everything we were asking for. And they kept falling apart and we're like getting discouraged because the market was really difficult at this time. And so, um, we just kept on affirming, Lord, I can't do this water anymore. This water is really beyond horrible. It's doubly bad than anything in Denver. I, and I lived in the mountains and I miss my old well water. Please, Lord, could I have a house with a well and then a septic and so that we're self-sustaining? I really liked that I had that in the mountains for 24 years with my family that I live there in the mountains. And and then also too, Lord, Dan keeps spraying in the garage every once in a while and is fumigating the house. And, oh, please, could we have a detached garage? I just, I can't deal with that, Lord. And then Lord, you know what? I miss my time in the mountains where I used to have this beautiful view out my window like it was it was nature inside of my home. Could I have that again? I felt so close to you when I, when I had that. I really miss that a lot. And and we I had built a pond and, and a river that was outside of that door too and I missed that. So I said, could I have a water source of some kind? You know, and preferably a, a lake or a river. But Dan's like, oh my God, Angela, right, this is a bit much. Um, <laughs> and, and I miss my, my, my wood stove. I missed that. Could I, could I have that too? I, I think I love to be self-sustaining and I like the idea of that. And in case anything goes wrong, your electricity goes out. I love that. And so anyway, um, we, we weren't finding it. And so we we're about ready to give up. And we just said, you know what, Lord, it must not be the right timing. We surrender to you. We give this up to you. And so as soon as we did that, and we said, well, if we don't, we'll try again in the fall when things are not so busy. And if we don't find it, then we'll go to Michigan because we know what we're looking for is in Michigan. And we've seen it. And we know the pricing's right for what we could afford, too. We, we'll just go there. And so we surrendered it to God. We let go. And all of a sudden, my sister calls. And she said, Angela, I found my last two homes that I bought on Craigslist. I'm like, What? I was in real estate forever. I know you don't go looking for a house on Craigslist. That's a nutty. But I, I told Dan, and I'm like, oh, my God. I can't believe that she found two homes on Craigslist. I, I can't even believe it. And in real estate, when you're in real estate, you just know that those are overpriced homes. Everything's wrong with it. So I, I, was, I had no intention of going on Craigslist. But Dan's like, oh, what the heck? So he goes on Craigslist, and lo and behold, there's this home. And he calls the lady up and he says, ma'am, um, is this a real listing or is this just a scam? And she says, oh, no, it's real. Is that really the Boise River down there outside of that big, huge glass window that looks like the outside of the proper outside of the nature is in the house? Is that is that the Boise River? Is this real? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, it is. He goes, can I just come and see it? So we hopped over quickly and took a look at it. And there was somebody already here looking around the, outside the property. And we planned to meet her in another couple of hours. And, and and we look all around. Oh, my gosh. There's the Boise River as big as life. Oh, my gosh. there There's a window as big as life. When you come into the room, the living room, like you feel like you're in the water right there. And, oh, my gosh, there's a wood stove. Oh, and there's a fireplace. Oh, my gosh, it's a wonderful fireplace. And, um. The detached garage, biggest life, right beside the house, detached as big as life, and but right, but it's just a breezeway between, but separated, and it it, it was there was nothing that we didn't ask for. 
that I just mentioned that we didn't get. And God even gave us a train noise because I love the sound of a train in the background. And just the perfect, not too, not too close, but far enough away you can hear it. And it's the perfect train noise. And I didn't even ask for that. I forgot all about it. More than we could ask for or imagine. Right. And so there was not one thing that I asked for that we did not get. This property had it all. And so we wrote an offer on it, and um, a whole bunch of other people did too. And would you believe it, even though our offer was not cash, many others were. Everybody jumped on this thing like it was, uh, you know, it was hot. And it was not in the multi-list, um, realtor multi-listing. It was only in Craigslist. And so, um, but anyway, offers were coming in like crazy, but we were the first offer, and we were full priced. And so they took it, and we got the house. Yep. And so that is a miracle, I think, because, but we were affirming everything we wanted and believing. And, 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 but when we let go and we let go of that, that's a trick to the whole thing. I believe in that mind treatment, you let go in the end. And that's what we noticed at that, at that, I don't know, I'm going to call it a church. They would oftentimes let go, but then they grab it back again and trying to control everything. It's when you let go and you let God and you go, don't keep digging it up to see if it's right. growing or not. You let go and you trust God. When things aren't going right, you just, you don't fight it. You don't force it. You just let go and let God and just trust. And all of a sudden, boom. And one more time that happened. So after Dan and I had um, work, we had our business going, we were married um, we had this little lull and things started slowing down and we're a little nervous. And then we had a job that we thought was going to be great. And when we looked at it, it was not a good job. It was really dangerous to, to do it. And we told the guy, you know what, we're not going to do this job. And he was mad and we needed that job. We really, really needed it. And so we're like, what are we going to do? We have no work. What's happening? We we're like kind of scared. Like, is this really going to be a blessed you know, company after all, what's going on here? And we just told that guy, no, we respect ourselves. We're not doing this job as much as we wanted to do it. And Dan didn't want to burn his bridge with this guy either. And it burnt the bridge. And so we're like, oh my God. And so we said, okay, all right. So we surrender. Lord, we're going fishing. So we went, got our poles, we went fishing. And while we were fishing, all of a sudden he gets a phone call. And that guy who called, Ended up giving us so much money. There was a whole massive house of wood to be done. Like sixty and seventy thousand dollars worth. Then, of work. And then right after that, God bless another us with one. another. And we got married. Sixty to seventy thousand. Yes. And oh wait, wait, we weren't married, and so that that big job that came from that fishing of trip paid for our wedding. That's what that we were dating. That's right. We were just brand new in business and not even married yet. And but that money. Prayed for a wonderful honeymoon. We went over to Canada and, and we went to the Niagara Falls and we went all, we traveled all back east and we just had the best time uh, of our lives, all paid for by this money we earned. And then we had another job and another, we, we had three years or four years, I think it was at least three years of job from this area that came from this. Massive all, financial again, prosperity. Again, letting go, letting go and don't force. So that's a trick to it. We can tell you that. But um, we we just uh, went fishing and affirmed while we we're fishing that you know, God, God, you know, God, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do, and so we we surrendered to you. But we, we affirmed we our good. We affirmed our good, and boom, we get the phone call, and it, we were just so blessed after that. Um, and and we got married off all of that. So anyway, um, that's our story. We, we should show them the view out the window real quick. Well, you no, know, it's too hard. You no, think? No, yeah. Okay. We'll show you. We'll show you one time. Yeah, anyway. it's a massive, beautiful, it is so all beautiful. glass. The whole back of the house, and there's a massive river. Yeah, and yeah. Our little place, our little glass place. We go out and have coffee we in the will, morning. Yeah, our meditation place. We have. Well, and, we don't want to just be bragging. No, but, but I'm but, just saying but it's God is but good. It, but it came from before that. It wasn't that. Before that, it was track home, and you know we're just in this place. I was very grateful. It was that grateful. Wonderful. Oh yeah, we were grateful. Now water was. Yeah, the water was terrible. Yeah, bathe in it, drink. Oh my god! And that's gosh. why we were affirming that we'd have some fresh water and well yeah, water. Yeah, beautiful, wonderful water. Wonderful water right mm, now. Wonderful. And so, but anyway, that is what we wanted to share today. We wanted to share that this works. A lot of people say affirmations don't work. They they do. they, they don't do them long enough. They don't believe in them. They don't know why it works. They don't know the science behind it. They haven't really tried it. They may have tried it for a day or whatever. 
but we can tell you what, what we're telling you about this faith and the assured expectation of things hoped for is experiential. It's not us just saying this works because the church says it so. It's not faith without works. It's faith in saying, no, we really acted upon this. We really believed. And we also have a movie in process. Yes, we're in, we're believing right now for all the money to pay for this movie. Yeah. But it's being done. It's already three quarters of the way. The script is three yep. quarters of the way written. And wow, you guys will not believe it. But it will be from Dan's first book. It's based off of his first book, um, Eyewitness, the shocking insider story of Jehovah's Witnesses. And um, and then our story of meeting, and which is also at the end of that book. And, and the miracles and just how... And the struggle that Dan had to go through to get out of the witnesses and how God got him out of there. It's an incredible story. It's incredible. And it also exposes the witnesses um, for some of their shenanigans, too. The whole movie is going to be absolutely powerful. And in Italy, he's, he's over in Italy writing Portugal, it. Portugal, I think. Portugal or somewhere, and he's putting it together. And he sent us already two parts of the treatment, so we're ready for the final part. And uh, he said, this is where it gets really good. And, and the other part was good. I mean, it's it'll engross you. It'll yeah. pull you in. Oh, but yeah. We, we we drew in that through an affirmation. We affirmed that we would find this right movie producer. Oh, he is the perfect he's guy. He's the perfect guy. He's tapped into my life and tapped into it, Angie. And affordable for what we and get affordable. afforded. And affordable. You, you know, this is a heavy-duty, big contract that it costs, you know, twenty five, thirty thousand 30000 to put together. Yeah, but he's in Portugal, so he did, they don't have to have that much yeah. to live there. And he's from America. He, he used to live, where do you live in? New York? Yeah. I, I think. Um, and a, and a little back east, and and Chicago, to, I think, and they moved to Portugal. Yeah, and that's and, the, and a week before, we happened to contact this lady, and she goes, "Oh, I'm working for Mel Gibson, and and uh, who's the other guy? Sylvester Stallone." She goes, "I got to get off the phone. I'm I'm working with DreamWorks right now," and I and we were like, "Is that real? You know, know. is that like?" But God's we got thought, big plans, yeah, man. we thought, man, when this movie comes out, we're going to contact her and say, we've got a wonderful treatment. Would you want to take a look at it? Because she has access because we asked her if we worked with her, would you be able to help us? She says, absolutely. And I'm hoping that we can produce it with our own money. Yeah, we so are. So that we have the full control. So we're having to ask God for a big bunch of money, you can imagine, to do a really good quality movie with, with so that we don't lose the control. Because you know how it is when you get a producer and then they get to decide the shots on how it will go and they can twist it and make it where we are not pleased with it and in this day and age you know we can't trust it so i really do pray and hope that it's in our control 100 percent. may god's will be done but we are believing god for the money so that we can do it um the way we want it done and done right so anyway that's the deal so that's what are we're hoping for right now and other things besides but that's one of the things Big so anyway guys yeah so we just want to say you know to, to us, we believe pay it forward. Um, we know that a lot of forces out there will come against this. They'll, they'll say they're new agers, you know, they're this or that. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? It happened. You know, and we're going to say that it happened and it's so and it works. And try it, you know. But but we don't expect you to just believe it. Try it for yourself. Give it a shot. That's what I did. And in fact, what helped me do it was my back was against the wall. And a lot of times you'll find when somebody's back's against the wall, when they get fired or they do this, they'll do what it is that they wouldn't oh, do before. Yeah. They'll say, I'm going to do this now, whereas they wouldn't do it because they were doing kind of okay. And so anyway, that's all we wanted to say today. Um, Grace, did you have any thoughts you um, wanted to say? I was going to share. I was just thinking that if a person doesn't believe in affirmations, well, maybe you have been exposed to some bad affirmations, like uh, when people speak down to you, when people are vicious, evil, when people lie about you, put you down. How do you feel then? If, if you don't believe in positive affirmations, do you believe in negative affirmations? Cool. Me personally... I really believe in negative affirmations because <laughs> I have experienced it. And uh, I also noticed that as soon as I talk to somebody that's positive, it's like a, a heavy load is lifted from my shoulders and I can start, start breathing again. So I do believe that words have a lot of power, but it's also so that I noticed that I am not that sensitive. So 
many times it doesn't bother me that much. So, yeah, uh, and I think it's really important to work on your personal development so you won't be so sensitive all the time because I believe that's a big source of. Uh, I mean, it's just, uh, well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I yeah do, I and, do. and that's why, you know, like we said earlier, you know, when somebody crosses your boundaries right there, if you can say, hey, whoa, whoa, that was the wrong thing to say to me. Why'd you say that? And and that kind of discharges it right there. It's only when we hold on to it or we don't have a voice is where we let it out. But I think she made a good point. If you're going to believe in negative affirmations, why not try to believe in positive affirmations, well, remember right? Remember that guy, uh-huh, absolutely. Remember that guy, Ashimoto, uh, yeah, Asha, uh, Asaro Emoto. Uh, he ha he did those water experiments where he took jars of dirty water and then he put uh, words on, uh, or just water, period, but he put words on them. So he put, um, you know, hate or, um, you know, kill, and then he put love on another jar of water, and then he would take the just let it sit for i don't know a couple of days and then he'd go put it under a microscope freeze it. and 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 freeze it he did several different experiments some just under the microscope others freeze freeze the water and then look at the crystals that came from it and they were beautiful with the words that were like it could be dirty water but with the words love on it it caused it to turn into this beautiful uh formations each of the crystals and just beautiful but the ones that had the word hate or kill or something on it were horrible, distorted, twisted, uh, mangled, uh, out of order. Um, no, it was just twisted and, and evil looking sometimes. And it was amazing because he really proved that you can restructure water. And, and he, look, we're made of mostly water. And so you, you speak love to that water inside of you that you're made mostly of or to each other and you're actually causing it to come into a good vibration or hell and be beautiful or not speak evil speak hate speak horrible words and see that water just go into twisted mangled uh disaster chaos confusion yeah he has a no book. order to it yeah he has a book, Ms. book of Saru and, Moto, and you can see it online on youtube yeah. But he did lots of them. He put names on there like God, Jesus, you know, uh, Hitler, you know, he yeah. put all this stuff. And it was amazing when you saw the crystals. Some of them would be just like Angela said, beautiful, oh, ornate crystal. I, like I love you. I think you're wonderful. He would put these on this water. And and when he when he looked at them under the magnifying glass, they would either be, like Angela said, totally fractured and broken and even discolored oh, and some of them would look poison and toxic yeah. and and he, so he concluded his book with this he says if thoughts can do that to water and we are 90 percent or 80 percent don't get caught up in that 70 percent water he said we could actually be killing one another with our intention I and he said if 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 that's our intention for somebody to hurt them or to say you're evil or I hate you, these words, th that intention that I have toward you can actually mess with your water. I can actually have a part in hurting you. He said, because if thoughts can do this with water, and you can just put a piece of tape on a, on a glass of water. With a word on it. And with a word on it, and it'll change the structure yeah. of the water. And so he did this. He prayed over the most poisonous dam and i don't know it was japan or somebody and you know the water you could drink it they showed all these guys going down and drinking the water and it was freaky and so yeah i thought that was a great conclusion if thoughts can do this to water imagine what we're doing to each other and there's a movie out called what the bleep and uh you ought to check it out um it's called what the bleep and uh if you type it in i, th I think it's on uh, netflix or gaia tv but it explains it even has a, a part in there about that guy. Yeah. And you remember the bleep, the bleep word is the F word, right? So what that blank beep. So that's why it's called what the bleep is going, but basically what's going on here anyway. It'll and, freak and, you out and, the it's movie. quite something. But anyway, guys, I think we should, uh, but, but Grace might have a little bit more to say. I'm, I want to give her a little chance to say a little bit more. If there's anything, Grace. Uh, I'm done. You're a wonderful couple. Thank oh, you, thank Grace, you. so much. Thank you for always joining in and yes. saying that, that stuff, you know, the stuff that you say, it's everything's important. It and I, I love that idea that you closed with, with saying, 
you, you know, if, if we're going to say negative things to each other or we're going to allow an affirmation from a church or a person to say you're stupid or you're whatever, why not? Why not just say the opposite? You know, yeah, if we're going right. to believe in negative affirmations, which they could be, why not believe in the other? So right, that's you know, good. Good. I'm trying to turn that around in my life so I don't speak against anyone. If we're working on anything, it. and I'm not, I'm not, I don't have well, a we've doubt. Learned if we say it really when, when we have to say it, there's no more to say. Like what happened yesterday online, once we said it, there's no, there's no reason to really talk about it anymore. We said what we said and it, it ended like it ended and it was what it was. So we usually try to do that. Now we don't hold in negative energy because like you said, it's just anger coming out a small hole later. It's so much better if we can muster up the courage or have the voice to say it right then. Right. And it, like have compassion, like, you know, asking God to give us the right view of this person or the situation. And how can we look at it differently so that we're sending good vibes to the to the situation and improving the situation instead of making it, you know, continue to be not the best that it could be. So we're adding to it when we're speaking negative. So we try to say, you know what, that person's doing the best they know how to do and they're brainwashed or whatever. And so we have to, we let it go. We send love to them. We send good to them. And um, we just trust that, that, that God will work this out. And I, I just believe that I believe good for them and, and just let go of anything else. And, and then we're trying to just turn it around every time when we go speak in a negative voice towards somebody about something we didn't like, then we try to turn it around every time so that we're blessing them and not sending the negative vibe and leaving it. So anyway, for what you, that's worth. And you know, what's interesting is my heart went out last night. I'm not going to mention any names, right. but my heart went out to them. When I mentioned Constantine, when I mentioned Inquisitions, they're like, what are you talking about? Never heard of it. I went, uh -oh. Right, that's ignorance. I, yeah, I went, so oh my God, passion, right? they haven't read any books. They haven't studied. They they don't, they don't really know. know much more than what they were taught in the, the witnesses. And I, I was like thrown back and my heart went out to him and actually went out to him. Like, if you haven't heard about that, you, you haven't heard about this. And you don't, they you know, I wasn't been? saying this, but I was like, Oh my God, we're really dealing with some things here. Some that needs to be lack of education, you know. So we can have compassion. So why beat them up? Why right. why knock them around? Right. It's, it's... That's why I hesitate sometimes when I like I want to be careful that I'm yeah. I'm not do, I'm sending bad you know bad words. And no right. intention of doing that yesterday. No intention. She says, "Oh, I didn't come on here to talk this in politics. Mm -hmm. I no no whatsoever. I'm not right. here to wreck your show or nothing like that. You know. Yeah. So, anyway, but we anyway, should, we should let it go. Anyway, Grace, thank you thank for coming you so on much grace for listening we we feel so glad i mean somebody there just to you know keep us on the right track say say what's not making sense um set us straight and give us the different perspectives it, it's a really a gift and i i feel bad sometimes we ramble on like crazy giving you no room and i don't know that's i don't know but anyway this was one of those no i i have room if i want to speak i just shout Okay. All right. Cool. All right. All I right. love it, Grace. I, I do too. love I it. Too. I do love it. And mm -hmm. and I'm always welcome. I'm always saying, say your piece. You know, it don't matter what show we go on. If but I'm in. talking, butt in, cut me off. Absolutely. I don't care. I, do I want to hear what you have to say. You know, I already know what I have to say. I already know. You know, Angela's heard it. I've heard her a million times. So we're just babbling. But, you know, when we hear somebody else, it's like, well, what do you think? Yeah. We're very curious what you think. Very much. Do you believe in it? Do you not? You know, whatever. So what scares we love you? it when what you say, you that's just a bunch of BS. And then we're like, well, right. why would you say that? Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. What, do you, what do you know that I don't know? I, I mean, I've experienced it, but there might be something I don't know. Or how can we say it better next time or in a way that's not so scary or, you know, this kind that's of thing. That's what I told the guy last night. I said, I don't know anything, honestly. I I really don't. I haven't been here that long. I've only been here 65 years. I don't know nothing. I don't, I don't know anything. I don't know anything for sure. And th th that was kind of a scary place for him to think, you know, but I said, but I, I, I'm going to say what I think I know, uh, like about this. And yeah, you know what I mean? And yeah, people well, have a right to think what they want. So to. please don't worry that we can handle anything you would ever oh, say yeah. to the contrary. Absolutely. Yeah. It's always good to have somebody throw in yeah. a, a curveball and yeah, say, well, you know, I don't know whatever. Yeah. You know. <laughs> All right. All right, Grace. Thank you. Write us in Facebook. We love 
communicating back and forth. It's great. Yes. Say what you want to say always. If you're hurting or you're feeling, you know, you want to share something that's on your mind. We're we're always here. We're yeah. we're looking at our phones pretty often and yeah. checking our emails when we're not out taking a little ride or something. And, and uh, for those of you who uh, will see that we have a part one of this this talk here. We are not going to put the part one out to everywhere. So you're just going to have to understand that, um, you know, if you really, really want part one, um, we'll discuss it. But uh, this is going to go out by itself. And um, it's just the way it is. We're just trying to be great, uh, considerate of our audience and not scare people away. There's only so much everybody can take in. And we're considerate of that. So um, I hope that you understand. And um, that's just how it's going to be. So but this one will go out to everyone. So everyone, everywhere. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Grace. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right, Sleep well.